we're in the hearing room today because um, I learned a new fun fact, which is that in January, we're supposed to book all of our rooms for the year. I did not know that was part of my work, so now I do. Uh, but court in the mayor's office took care of it for us. But this day, um, the PBTA had a hearing about oh, okay. their rate change. So, so that was in that space. Hi, Human Rights Committee. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> <My> Mayor. <laughs> Um, can, can I, we talk about the minutes? Yes, please. Uh, they look really good, very thorough. Just about one little thing, safe passage on the second page is safe passage, not safe passages. You're not serious. Yeah. What do you mean? That's the name of it, safe passage. What do you mean? Is that what, what what's yeah. reading the name? It's what we call a Scrivener's error. Yeah, Scrivener's. Okay, other th than that, um, do we have a motion to approve the minutes as amended? I move that we approve the minutes. Okay, second. And all in favor? Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. I will just say on, on that topic, the Not In Our Town group in Greenfield last week launched a Dignity Pledge campaign, so they're doing it. Good. I did get an email from one of the members of Not In Our Town. Um, they, they're they trying to work with the Human Rights Commission, but I think that they're not completely yeah, collaborating with this yeah. anymore. But good, I'm glad they got that started. Yeah. Thanks. Um, the Thanks. Okay, so since our last meeting, um, the next most recent of the worst school shootings in the country happened. Um, and I wanted to see if this, I want to test out with you all if there is a response from our commission that we would want to, um, to send to the legislators to represent Northampton. Uh, I think that there's a clear Human rights available to this. We, is it a bicycle day or not quite yet? Oh no, it is a bicycle, but there's also a meeting of PBT in it. Yes, yes, sorry about that. I'm sorry, well, I forgot. So, um, Sabina, we're just talking about the school shooting and the movement, the gun control movement that is happening, um, and whether there's a role for the Human Rights Commission to um, to advocate to the legislators who represent Northampton about um, seeking some um, gun reform legislation. I think that there is an art, a human rights piece of this that's rooted in the UN Convention for Children's Rights that they need to feel safe and they're, they're, they have a right to education and right to safety. I think that, that those fall in our purview. Thank you. Yes. So the, the, what, what I was, the, I kind of, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought that Massachusetts was like great with gun control. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong? No, you're right. But there oh. are federal, there are federal oh. um, pressure we could put on a federal level. Oh, so you're saying like to McGovern and okay, got it. Yeah. And how great is great? Um, and we are better than a lot of places. So the Wall Street Journal had a really interesting figure of um, looking at where are gun rights and the number of shootings. And Massachusetts is like the second, somewhere between the fourth most restrictive gun rights with a similar, but they're sort of the same in terms of how many shootings there are. So showing a correlation between the more limited weapons are. Yes. Wait, you mean, wait, say that again. So it, there is a correlation to how when it's yes. more restrictive, there are fewer. It's a graph mm -hmm. showing all 50 states mm -hmm. and showing shootings and then um, 
how restrictive our gun laws. And it's a total correlation. Um, <laughs> Places with the least gun laws, I think it's Alaska and Arizona, have the highest number of shootings. Oh. And um, the places. So, I'd like yes. to um, suggest that there are other things that we can do, and I'm not sure if it's appropriate because they're not because they're private businesses. But there, are, on social media, it appears that there are many, many large corporations that are abandoning their relationship with the National Rifle Association, which may not be our purview to comment on. However, there are, um, there are also uh, retailers that are now going to halt the sale of guns. That includes mm -hmm. Dick's, and I just saw before I came here that Walmart is no longer to sell assault assault. rifles. Okay. And I think that uh, sending something to our local Dick's and our local Walmart uh, from the Northampton Human Rights Commission, or um, would it be appropriate for us to, if you're if you're casting about for responses from this commission to the mass shooting, I, I think there's two ways we can go, which is to uh, say our position on increased regulation of guns and our thankfulness to uh, big corporations that have that are taking a stand, doing their part. Right. The other angle uh, I was also thinking about is the five colleges, um, the admissions offices that are saying if you were mm -hmm. engaging in First Amendment protests, you are still. Yes. We got your back. Yeah. Yes. Basically. Um, so how do what, are we agreed that this is something that is within our um, our strategies and something that we want to do, feel compelled to do, called to do? I'm saying FedEx does like they do um, they have they give funding to the NRA so that's what people were upset about I think with FedEx um, so I saw that but I think like supporting places that are at least at the very least that would be amazing. so the question for me is would we extend this to big corporations because all of the rental car agencies have made a public statement that they uh, um, are cutting their support for the National Rifle Association and they're terminating their discounts for National Rifle Association members. Um, I'm not sure how appropriate it is for us to comment on that. Right. And also, how far how far afield do we want to go, and can we go with the capacity and that, that whole thing? Mm -hmm. Should we simply act locally, which is why I think because we have a Walmart and a Dick's here, and I'm aware of them, there may be others, but. That seems appropriate to me. But we do have an enterprise in town, too. Yeah. I like to keep it local mm -hmm. when we can. Does that make sense to me? Of course, we, I mean, we don't even know if the Walmart here sells guns. Oh, it does. Think it, did. it does. Oh, it yeah, does. It does. Oh, yes. yeah. yeah. It's a very center of the store. Oh. So it sells guns. That means it sells semi-automatics. So. so what Dix has done is they're specifically not going to sell um, automatic weapons. Or, or semi-automatic. Or semi-automatic. Something they're, about the, the ammunition to the, the bubble stuff? The part, yeah, the clips. Mm -hmm. um, they are still going to be selling. And they're no longer going to sell to people under 21. Well, that's good. I haven't, I haven't seen anything about Walmart. This is the part usually where Karen and Marie agree to write a letter. <laughs> <laughs> they edit it. We say it looks great, bring it in. And then we edit it for two or three sessions. 
<laughs> or, or not. Sometimes we, some of them we just let go. <laughs> so we can break with tradition. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, we're looking for um, a PDT. I thought it might be. So go out the back door and across the parking lot. Um, there's a, another brick building. It's right in there. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It does drive me completely crazy that nobody brings out the issue that the people who wrote the Second Amendment mm -hmm. did not have automatic and semi-automatic guns in mind, I think. They didn't exist then. It took the same gun that the boy used for the shooting. It took one to two minutes to be able to fire off one round, and he was able to shoot off like a hundred in five minutes. But that they hide behind it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't really want to engage this discussion, but so the Second Amendment was by about maintaining a militia exactly. whose job it was to fight other forces. So I, if semi-automatic weapons happened, I'm sure they would have said that that should have been part of the deal too. The, the well-regulated. The well-regulated militia. The, so and if, if we get away from whether they're talking about militia or individual rights, it's like, so. But at least they're talking about regulations. I agree with you because at the time, it would have been the difference between a gun right. Right. and a bow and arrow exactly. or a rock, right. and they're like, let's go with the gun. Yeah. So I agree with you that they would have they would have accepted whatever the highest caliber was. Right. Right. Yeah, but does that mean they would would have allowed it to be any individual? That's mm -hmm. what they were doing. Well, I think there's that's where the question. They made a lot of mistakes when they wrote the Constitution and first framed this country, and I'm happy to go back and amend it for them. <laughs> but so, that's beyond our purview. <laughs> <laughs> so are we thinking about a letter to the Gazette that says, because I actually haven't heard anybody yet say, reminding us of the UN's statement mm -hmm. of children have a right to safety um, starting with that and saying so therefore this is why we'd like to make a statement um, then the question is, is is it about and I actually like the idea of congratulating organizations and corporations and companies and others that are willing to take a stand on this because it's hard um, I'm not sure how we will we would name them because this is going to be a real moving target. Mm -hmm. I, I think every day there's new right. interesting things going on. Um, but I, but also I think urging people, I, what I'd want a letter to do is to urge people to find ways to support organizations and legislators that are doing more to protect the rights of children. I agree, we don't have to name the local corporation because there might be something that comes out next week that their CEO has done something yeah. you know horrific I agree that you know educate yourself in your community look around social media has lots of postings and some of those corporations have stores in our community find them support them I agree it doesn't have to be uh, we don't have to name them I'm sure everyone knows, but just in case people don't, the 24th is when um, the major protests are happening, the 24th of March. Mm -hmm. I know North Hampton's having one, Boston's having one, Washington, D.C. Well, we could try to time our letter to that. Right. It's a, um, it's a short window. We won't have a Human Rights Commission meeting between now and then. We'd have to write it right now. Well, or can't we can't can't we can't this body authorize people to write it and submit it? Yes. So, I mean, then we won't have to worry about that wordsmithing. Scribner's mistakes, not that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, and and um, congratulations. Thanking the colleges who are um, who are accepting students if they. You know, if they are disciplined for walking out and encouraging the local school department to 
So are we all in agreement that we like the idea of in any way that we can reduce the number of weapons is a good thing, so therefore stores stopping selling them and setting the limit that in, and to the extent they do sell them, you have to be 21. Those are things we apply. Any of those steps, yes, that protect children. I'm reading the declaration and there is article three says everyone has the right to life, liberty, and security of person. Is, is there a specific statement about, I thought there was a specific statement about children. I'm looking, I haven't seen it yet. There's a, um, it's, are you looking for, wait, are you looking for the PDTA no. meeting? Okay, it's in the building across the parking lot. Go out the back door across uh -huh. the parking lot. Okay. Okay. Well, you were asking me Oh, are you looking at the convention, the UN Convention on Human Rights or the Children's? No. Uh, it's called the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Okay. There's a, there's one that's specific to children. Okay. And is that also you part of the UN Convention on the And do you think it's right to focus particularly on the children? I mean, do you think that's a, I mean, I'm not saying it is, but I just want to think it through. Um, because in reality, if there were two adults in this most recent shooting, and many mm -hmm. mass shootings involve people of all ages, indiscriminate. But this is the first time that by these children, these young people protesting, that people are taking this a little more seriously, and we should. So I think we should kind of piggyback on that. Absolutely. Yes. That's my thought, and that's that's the root. That's the that's what I see is rooted in the Convention on Children's Rights, UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. It's right here, Article 2080. Um, all children have the right to a primary education, which should be free. Wealthy countries should help poorer countries, etc. Discipline in schools should respect children's dignity. For children to benefit from education, schools must run in an orderly way without the use of violence. Any form of school discipline should take account of the child's human dignity. Governments must ensure the school administrators um, review their policies and eliminate any discipline practices involving physical, mental violence, abuse, neglect, etc. So I think we get to fold in the sentence that says that we strongly object to the Republican administration's suggestion that school teachers be armed since schools are supposed to be run without violence. And the threat of your teacher being armed is a bit of a showstopper for kids. You might say, oh, they're there to stop the terrorists. Well, guess what? If every single teacher in your school is armed, what does it say to the kids? Mm -hmm. Or if you don't know which teacher is armed or not. So you're aware that this is actually already present in Texas? That there are, there's a school district where kids are... Are you also aware? Remember that since 9-11, there are frequently armed people on plane flights. I forgot about that, but yeah. Marshals. Yes. It's random so that you never know who's there or not. I'm less comfortable with that statement being part of our letter. Um, I'd rather keep things just children have a right to feel safe at school. Mm -hmm. um, my cousins in Georgia are totally comfortable with rifles and guns around all the time. It's just sort of the way they live. So to them, it's not a, I mean, I get anxious if there's a gun, when I see the guns display at Walmart. Um, but I think people are different about that. I'm more, I, I would like to find a way to support things that limit access to guns or limit the chances that guns are in a place that might hurt kids. I actually do agree that the teacher shouldn't be armed, but I that's I'm less comfortable with having that be. So I wonder if we also want to say in the letter, um, you know, applaud the the students for their activism. Do so you feel okay about that? I, I actually th think that that's double edged short because uh, the young people who have been Black Lives Matters have felt like they have been completely ignored. Mm -hmm. And because the primary oh. actors, and I say that 
the primary cases that we're seeing from the Parkland High School primarily are white. They're not all white, yes. but they're mostly white. Yeah. And uh, as a person uh, from a minority community, which is the Jewish community, I can tell you that the school and many of the victims are Jewish. And there's a bit of, uh, um, there's a bit of, uh, there's just, we have to acknowledge who's getting, who's getting the, who's getting the press here. Why is this group different? Why, why is this group of white kids getting this incredible momentum and black kids are not? And same with colleges, they weren't saying that they were okay with any students being disciplined if they were supporting Black Lives Matter and anything happened, mm -hmm. but colleges are speaking out now mm -hmm. um, in support of these students, I heard that. So it's a complicated yeah. uh, matter of white privilege. Is this, and I don't have any sense, and I don't hardly watch television, is, is this a fairly prosperous area? Yeah, the average yeah. home in the Parkland School District is six hundred thousand dollars. That was nice. That's worth. I mean, I think it's the other piece. Was and violence was very, very low there. Like something completely unheard of before this happened. So they're not used to any of that kind of stuff. See, I think it's actually financial privilege that this is. That's why this is hit. I thought possibly both, but I didn't. No. Yeah. They run together. Mm. So are we opening, are we still talking about what the letter? Yes. Yes. Really good discussion. I think we could say that there has been a great deal of media attention um, and I do think that uh, we that this wave of media attention also owes a debt of gratitude to the Me Too movement because it's kind of popular in America right now to speak out against the things that have been completely taboo to talk about. Well in that case when you go back to Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. do you think rather than I think and then the lesbian and gay movement. Exactly. <laughs> I think we should just keep the letter very, very focused about gun control and regulate, you know, reducing the number of guns. And I think we should. And, and the point that, you know, people have, kids have a right to go to school and be safe. I mean, I think it's a very interesting context to put it in. But. that are working to restrict or reduce the number of assault weapons, high, what do you call those, high, what do you call the clip things? I'll find the right words. The, 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 you know, the large clip, large size clips and, um, and raising the age of purchase on such weapons. I think that we're not hip to this because we don't do it all the time, but I think background checks are a big deal. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, enhancing the, uh, and, and limiting private sales, anything that's done to. Gun show loopholes. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's so crazy. Um, do we also want to mention the, the March though? You said there's one in Northampton? Yeah, on the 24th. They're doing it nationwide, but Northampton's having one. Do we want to mention that? Do you know who's sponsoring it or speaking or anything I like that? I can look it up on my Facebook. I joined the... I would give them, a, give them a link.
hosted by Jeff Rutherford and Ben Moss Horowitz. Oh, those are North Cuban High School kids. Oh, okay. Cool. Are you looking for PBTA? Yes. It's across the parking lot in the um, Chalski okay. building. Thank you very much. Well, yeah, it says it's co-sponsored by Pioneer Valley High School students. Um, I don't know if this is the name of a group of the badass activists of the Pioneer Valley. Yeah. Just just Indivisible group. Northampton, Pioneer Valley Women's March, and Progressive Pioneer Valley. I guess you better name all of them. Oh, no. We don't have to. We can just say the event. Yeah, it's called the March for Our Lives. I can send you the link in an email. Just so. I think I've kind of got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. this letter, is that something that you feel you'd be able to do? You have the capacity for that? Sure. Mm -hmm. But you just took a lot of notes. I, I will. He'll send it to me. Okay. Yes. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I thought you were taking notes because you were going to draft it, but yeah, I'm happy to. Thank you. Um, so that is the proposal. I propose that, can I make the proposal as the chair? Yeah. Just, I don't have to hand the gavel over to another. Okay. Um, I propose that we authorize Lori Loizel to draft a letter to the Gazette with these bullet points that we just named. I second that proposal. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. I just have a question though. So you and I will look at it and do we want to have like a third person to be a third set of eyes? Okay. You guys are all okay? Two is fine. Okay. 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 Fantastic. Um, I also, before we go on to the next item, um, I wanted to report back on a couple of things. I did send an email to Bill White, who was the liaison to the Youth Commission, um, to invite youth commissioners to be a liaison, liaison to a report, um, a non-voting participant in our conversations. I have not heard back yet. Um, and I also, got in touch with Elisa and they had, uh, there was <coughs> convoluted process surrounding um, uh, city council committee assignments as the new city administration took over and she's been assigned to, I think she said four other committees mm -hmm. and um, though she is sad to not be here, she enjoyed being here, she feels like she doesn't have the capacity to be in another meeting on a regular basis, but she will continue to receive our uh, our agendas in minutes, and if we need her, we can call upon her. Okay. Thanks for reaching out. Mm -hmm. Carla, by the way, had a uh, child's medical appointment, so but she is happy to be rejoining us and grateful to the commission for creating space for her. You know, there's not something that we need to talk about that isn't on the agenda. Okay. It's the CDGB thing. Oh, right. Uh, which I did talk to Peg Keller to get information. So, right. So that's new business. Okay. That new business. Okay. Um, so I'm going to com combine the the next two items. So what do we want to learn together and what do we want to do for public events? And I sent you guys links to... several things that we could, that I think we said we were interested in exploring in the brainstorm that we did last time. Um, let's see, where would really we like to start? Would you say out loud what those four links were to just 
Sure. So, oh, that's right. Camera's gone. So, one is an, an active bystander training um, program that is, and this link is to the Quabbin Mediation Center, which offers that training. So, sponsoring an active bystander training in Northampton. And I um, think they do it for free. Okay. Even better. Sure. Uh, there is an example from Leverett about the community learning how to have difficult conversations across differences that we could use as a model for shaping, uh, holding some conversations here in Northampton. And they invited people from communities, mm -hmm. a community far away to come. That yes, from uh, Kentucky, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we also have the Catholic Charities page, a link to their Welcoming Refugees Resettlement Project. Uh, we were interested in seeing if there's a way we could support um, immigrants as part of our work over the coming year. And the last one was a list of classes from the Sojourner Truth School, which offers three community classes. And that that went to the question of, is there something we want to learn together as a, as a Human Rights Commission? Were there anything, was there anything else from the brainstorming last time that, that did not show up here? So at the last meeting, I was cryptic about being involved with a program. Now I don't have to be cryptic anymore. It actually folds with the community learning how to have difficult conversations. I was contacted by Dennis Didwell, um, city councilor, district one or two, I forget which. He has set up a group that have been working towards how might we model and learn how to have difficult conversations about Northampton. Mm -hmm. um, it frankly grew out of the difficulty around conversations that happened with the surveillance camera discussions that went on. Um, and sort of how do you start having conversations about things that are very important to the commons of Northampton, but people feel that they can't do in a safe fashion. Um, people in the room include some ministers, but also some business people from the community who um, found it difficult to be able to have a voice about the camera discussion, and actually a, a variety of other discussions. So. Uh, they've got some of the facilitators who are involved with the Leverett, um, Kentucky discussion. The first discussion is going to be on April 3rd. It hasn't been announced formally yet, though that's the working plan. Um, the topic hasn't been set. Who will, but they are, and, and there's still some work going on, but it's trying to set up talking about something about the city that we know lots of people have strong opinions and can you model a discussion where people don't start yelling at each other. This, the School for Social Work has a lot of experience with it. Oh. And um, I did in fact speak to them and I had to contact the dean, but she's been away. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure there are people who've written papers and who've, um, you know, this whole thing of having difficult talk conversations has definitely been, um, you know, They've, they've been involved. Um, and Paula Green, who's the one who did it in Leverett, she's been a major person in the Karuna Project, which is about having difficult conversations around the world you know, with the Israelis and the Palestinians, with a whole lot of different groups. Um, you know, and I, I think she would probably, I mean, she might have been persuaded. To come, but I'm sure there are people at school for social. And this project you're talking about is that open to the public? It, so it, it will be. Um, and actually, this first discussion is supposed to be a public discussion. It's probably going to be at the JFK Middle School. Oh. Um, and what they're what everybody's trying to figure out is. Whatever it's sort of how to do it, and do you do 
think you start with about this number of people around the table to begin talking about an issue. Mm -hmm. So you try to have people with highly varied ideas mm -hmm. around the table, and then just start talking about it. And you know, why do you feel that way? And tell me more and stuff. And um, but you can't have a hundred people. But you could do a fishbowl kind of thing. That's exactly what the plan, yeah. the plan is to do fishbowl and then quote tag. May I take your place at the table? Oh. Man. So that this is what's all still being worked out a bit. Who are the people that are going to be at the table? That's also still being worked on. I think the problem is I'm one of the people that's going to be at the table. But it's one of the problems is. For instance, at the moment, they haven't been able to get anybody from the Worker Center to agree to participate. And they're a pretty strong voice about um, some of the issues that they, surveillance cameras, um, getting rid of things that have been done to make it more difficult to be homeless mm -hmm. in uh, Northampton, um, lights, um, old Northampton versus new Northampton. Who has money, who doesn't? Mm -hmm. Who's downtown Northampton for? Is it for, mm -hmm. you know, who feels welcome there? That, those are, these are the themes that are running around. Um, but I've got to say the discussions I've, sort of the practice discussions have been amazing. Mm -hmm. But some of the people who've participated said, I don't think I could say that in front of a lot of people in a fishbowl mm -hmm. in a fishbowl because people would stop coming to my mm -hmm. place so it's a really interesting so and it, you know so it's all about how do you listen how do you talk how do you and how do you mediate conflicting views um, I've got to say the first discussions were amazing but everybody already knew how to play in the sandbox mm -hmm. properly. Um, so it was, and so this is the challenge, is how do you broaden it, but also try to get people. This all is growing out of rather painful experiences for four or five of the people. Mm -hmm. So it, that's, and that's why I couldn't, People were keeping it a secret because they thought it, this began to get. Ah, this is so weird that people felt like they couldn't do it. I was asked because of the civility. But I'm sure they would love to have um, the Rights Commission sort of also being involved in some way, shape, or form. But, so I think the answer to your question, Karen, which is that you lump together, what do we want to learn together in public events proposals? Mm -hmm. I think that we've been dancing around this, that this group is interested in developing our skills and our capacity to have difficult conversations. Uh, they're not going to go away, even if we learn how to have difficult conversations with one another in a civil way. Mm -hmm. There's going to be conflicts down the road in our community, in our city, in our state, in our country. And um, I think this group is, is uh, interested in developing, um, and I read it, we're just interested then in, in developing our listening skills. Because we're all really good at articulating what we think. And I guess it's, it's I read, it's listening is really the hard part. Mm -hmm. Are you, um, is this group planning to have, you said April 3rd is their first, so they're planning to have a series of conversations? It, it's still, there's a, it's a gentle dance, sort of, of how to do it, right. that it's meaningful. You've met just one. It's actually, this is, there have actually been three meetings. And, um, um, and the next meeting is supposed to be this panel discussion that there's an argument going on amongst everybody about should there be another planning thing before. The next meeting is April 3rd? The, the event is going to be April 3rd. Yeah. But what's the panel discussion? 
hasn't been stated. Oh, okay, it hasn't been stated. It's probably going to be one of those topics I just set out. Is there a date set? It's, it's not open to the public. This is the people planning the April 3rd event. Yeah. But the April 3rd will be Is a panel public. discussion. It will be a pro panel. Um, but it will be open to the public. Mm -hmm. I, for instance, people are upset about it. Should, should the newspaper be there? Because if what you want to do is sort of talk and listen, what's the role of the newspaper in the room? Um, Report and, on who talked and who listened. Well, there's concern that if all you did was read it in the paper, if somebody, this is a really a bunch of people from the, uh, the business community who mm -hmm. want to be able to talk. We care about downtown, but we need to think about who's downtown for. And um, that, that's why it's really difficult to really, and so that, that's this dance, <laughs> is um, how do you do this? And that's, uh, there, there, there's no question, and a public event's gonna happen on April 3rd. The question is, is the format, will it be fishbowl, will it be uh, tables moving out, who, Will there be, how many facilitators will there be? There's a lot. I don't believe in nepotism, but I happen to have a husband who's awfully good at this stuff. I suppose I could divorce him temporarily. <laughs> he's really good at this kind of stuff. And, you know, probably good. I think my concerns about it is everybody who's participated so far doesn't need this training. Mm -hmm. um, and um, like the facilitators who've been meeting with us haven't had to say a word. So, but there is also a truck. What goes on in the room doesn't leave the room. There was sort of a, it was like going to a 12-step meeting. It was, there were all of these rules of engagement. Um, and that, that's why it gets difficult of should, how, how do you bring the public into those kinds of tools. And you have to break beyond that. Is, the, is there disagreement in the room? What do you mean? Well, you said people in the room don't need the training, but I'm wondering if it's because they kind of all agree with each other. No, they're, um, um, so you, there's disagreement in the room, but people were, so for instance, probably, I don't know for sure, but I think a number of the business owners would like to have surveillance cameras and would like to have uh, fewer homeless people in front of their establishments and things like that. Um, however, they also said, but you know, that's sort of the funkiness of the place and that's okay, but how do you, but how do you do things to make things safer, but also fair? Um, I mean, frankly, it's why I was glad we didn't do Commission discussion about surveillance cameras mm -hmm. because this, my sense of the stridency on all sides, uh, there was there was no talk and listen. Mm -hmm. It was all. You know, one of the things I think is really hard about talking and listening now is is the is the fact that what. Go ahead. No, go, go ahead. Do you know I, what I'm going to say? I, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't. What, what I think is really hard is, is that we don't have a shared set of facts. So, you know, it's like you can't even agree on what's, what's real. Yeah. I think that's partly why it's so hard to have a conversation because you feel like you're going to go crazy because the other person, because like they're saying these walls are yellow, they're not green. And that makes you want to go crazy. I think that's the reality of life in America is if you are white, male, middle-class, able-bodied Christian, your facts are different than anybody who doesn't fit those criteria. Your experience are, those walls are not green. Because if you're the white, middle-class, Christian male who had them painted, 
they might be some shade of green here and going to tell people. I think that we do fundamentally all live in a different America, and that's why our facts are different. I, I agree with that, totally. But I also think there's other things going on too at the moment that are skewing things a lot. And we live in a world which has become extraordinarily polarized in, um, you know, in cruel ways, like the huge uptick, that the uptick just in Massachusetts of um, anti-Semitic incidents is extraordinary in the short term. Just to use that as an example, let alone the other stuff. I think if um, it sounds like there's going to be somebody, some group, um, offering conversations across dif difference in the coming months, that we don't need to maybe take that on. Take that on too. Yeah. But we could see if they want some support or co-sponsorship or something. You want to? Do we want to ask Booker to ask them if they're interested in that? I mean, because at, for, at first they didn't even want me to talk with you about it. Mm -hmm. That's how sensitive everything was. Um, I think they're getting close to. Could we attend and learn mm -hmm. and and use it as a? You asked if we wanted if there was anything that we wanted to learn together. This is something that we want to learn together. Yeah. So can this be an ominous? I'm gonna. I'm leaving it at the moment as community learning how, how to have difficult conversations. Um, I can check with them. He's gonna want. They're not gonna set limits on who can come to the conference. The April third. Uh, the right. April third thing. So that I can put into the minutes that this is gonna happen on. April it's an 3rd. evening thing, right? Yeah, it's an evening thing. So anyway, I I, I can go. Can you? Yeah. I can help. Yeah. Go. Okay. Can, what if we are all, there's some weird thing that happens. Like as long as we don't conduct business. Right. Wouldn't be. We can be in the same room? Okay. <laughs> right, because we did the refugee thing at yeah. my house and we were, there were many of us there and we just didn't conduct any business. Yeah, and the purpose of the minutes really at the, the bottom line is that they record um, what we talk about on our agenda, you know, the topics that we cover and um, the votes that we take. Really, the bare bones is really just the votes that we take need to be um, recognized. So if you're not comfortable with the whole, it doesn't need to be there. But as soon as that those details are nailed down, you'll let us know. Because mm -hmm. I, I think it, they, he feels it sort of grew out of our civility mm -hmm. discussion. Mm -hmm. That's part of where they took off on this. And it is, it, it is one of the natural progressions that we thought might happen from yeah. that. So, and we thought we might be the ones to bring it, but if other groups do, we don't need to. It's great, yeah. So yeah. our next meeting is uh, Wednesday, March 21st at 5.30. And I presume you'll have an update between now and then, Parker? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be the 28th? The March 28th. I don't know who put things on my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> March 28th. Yeah. yeah, and I'm doing the next. You know that already. That's yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so if you're willing, Booker, to ask if there's a role that you might play. My, my guess is it will not be an organized. It would, might be a partnership, um, sponsorship, but I think the control sort of sits in one place. Oh yeah, but, but maybe they let us bring the, ple the big pledge poster. Yeah. Maybe hmm. we can get signers if, if we have to roll it up by now. I think it is. So do we want to talk? So I actually liked the bystander training program. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Um, I'm of, of the other things to talk about. That's what I thought would be the most helpful thing to have. I did too. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay. Um, I will reach out to the club of mediation and when do we think would be a good time? that we would want to offer this 
time of year? Like when do we want to want to set a goal for when we want this to be held? May? Maybe that's what I was thinking. Give us two months to prepare. So it just feels that feels a little soon to me. Mm -hmm. Does that kind of yeah? Because yeah, because I was going to ask who who do we want to have to be there? How would we advertise it? I mean, is it the kind of thing that if 20 people are there, can you do it? Or if there are only five people there, or if there are 100 people? I, okay, so maybe June and at the senior center? Because hmm. that's accessible? I mean, I guess you're going to reach out to them, so you could ask them what's mm -hmm. the ideal number, you know, what's the minimum, what's the maximum, how long it is. Much it costs. I, don't know. I might be wrong, but I think it's free. And also, how it might just be the way I saw it, but it looked like the training was more about um, LGBT issues as opposed to other kinds of issues. I don't. To me, the training might be. The way you deal with one thing is the same way you would deal with the other, but mm -hmm. I don't know how specific their training is or what kinds of cases they use. Right. There is a link on that page that I sent you that takes you to um, an additional website. And I'm saying it looks like the same kind of language. Yeah, it doesn't specify. They do say minimum. And it's available for anyone 12 years or older. So that allows children. Okay. I will get some more information and then we can have a more informed conversation in March. Thank you. Thanks. to um, new business and Lori we ask you to talk about the CBDG question. Sure. So I think we can cover before Booker has to go. Okay. Uh, so Peg Keller who is the um, works in the mayor's office um, reached out. Um, she says they have a committee that conducts interviews for agencies applying for public services funding from the Community Development Block Grant program. Chris has has represented the Human Rights Commission. I did last year. Okay, and I was unable to do it this year. Chris can't do it this year. It's at an on time. It's actually um, March 13, 14, and 15, which is in two weeks. Thursday, uh, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 12 noon to 2 o'clock each day. So the agencies that are applying for money come in and then you hear their pitch and then on the last day, you stay a little extra time and you talk about how you're gonna divide up the money. And which, they, which day is this the same? It's uh, Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, March 13, 14, and 15. And it has to be the same person. So they're looking for someone from the Human Rights Commission. Do you have anything you wanna say about it? Uh, it was exactly that commitment. It was a very discreet commitment. Uh, it was extremely interesting um, to listen to the organizations that do it. And there's about $100,000 that gets divided among about the same 12 agencies who apply every year. And Peg, there's a panel. And Peg told me on the phone today there is one extra agency this year, so that might you know, mean, Skew it a little bit. Yeah, that might mean they need, the people on the panel need to spend some time figuring out if they want to fund it, how to take money from the others or whatever. So, It was almost entirely painless and interesting. And I would love to have done it this year. I have a uh, work conflict. And what is the, um, 
why why is the CDBG requesting someone from human rights? What's our lens? Traditionally, a person from the human rights committee has served on that panel. Yeah, because it's. Um, I, did, I did. I did ask her that specific question, and I took the notes. Um, um, basically, it's the groups that go after this money are groups that really work for the disenfranchised in our community. So it sort of has a human rights angle. So, and are we? Does is she asking us to to have some kind of human rights evaluative lens? She's asking if a member of this commission is willing to volunteer to sit on the panel for those three days. It's the beginning and the end of the commitment. Mm -hmm. Just to. And as you're, six hours. Re as you're reading through the proposals that are supposed to, are you imagining that part of your responsibility is to look at the proposal with a, through the lens of human rights? Yes. I suppose there's not a lot of wiggle room. The same groups come every year. The same groups get virtually the same amount of money every year. Mm -hmm. What's exciting about it is that representatives from each organization will come in and you can ask them any questions if they do a presentation. Very short, they get like 15 minutes. Uh, but it was very interesting. And, Who uh, else is on this panel? There's a city councilor, Gina is on it. Uh, the facilitator is a minister whose name escapes me. And Peg. Todd. Oh, Todd Weir, he's, Todd the, he's the first churches. Peg is there, and Peg's assistant. Uh -huh. okay. And one or two other um, human service organization. And um, City Council Mary and LaBarge also participate. Okay. So that's the ask. And I, I can't do it. I'll be, um, I have to take, I have some medical appointments that week. What time is it on? It's noon to two. Oh, I have work. And it's in this room. I, I, my schedule allows me to be there. Oh. I think you'd love it. I'm sure I would. And Peg would be thrilled. Well, are you willing to do it? I am willing to do it. I wanted to make sure there was no other. I couldn't. I could only do one thing. Okay. And I would definitely have to juggle things. Okay. But, you know, if nobody else could, you know, I would have tried to. I, I move that Karen represents us. Amen. I second. <laughs> I mean, I second. And let's give her a call. <laughs> Amen, simply because I agree. Yes. Yes. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, no, I'm glad to. It'll be, I used to work with, uh, right next door to Peg and Cam, so it'll be nice. Okay, great. Fine. So, try it. Yeah. Very good. Any other new business? Um, I had sent you what the oh, yes. Yes. people from New York had messaged out. It yes. wasn't very, this is the, um, what we discussed last month about the um, race amity day. Yes, that's yeah. what it was. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, they responded. It wasn't very detailed. I asked them for more information on what they were actually planning on doing. Since we wanted more information on that, it was a very rough draft. Let me see if I can I sent it to Karen. It didn't have much detail at all. Basically, they were more hoping for it to be a kind of give and take. So we would come, we present things that we've done and our ideas and other people would do that as well. So it's more of like a brainstorming session, it seems like, and understanding from one another. So it wasn't anything that was really like concrete. The schedule was just kind of like lunch and meet together and discuss this here and meet this. So it wasn't anything. Where is Wheelock College? It's in Boston, about two blocks from Fenway. Two blocks from Beth's building. Yeah. Which is where it's important. Yeah, right there. Michelle Long was going to Simmons. Oh, really? Yeah, for the oh. Women's Leadership Conference. Really? Yeah, so she'll be there in April. I'm working on that day. I was really bummed. Uh, oh. But yeah, I was very excited. To oh, that's this. your alma mater? No, we all kids, but they're all uh, colleges of Fenway. So uh, there's oh. seven colleges, so we're all like intermingled with one another. I don't know what work you do, but I can cover. Sorry? <laughs> Actually, I don't know what work you do, but I can cover. Oh, thank you. <laughs> For such an occasion. I know, right? Let's see. Uh, oh, one last thing. Um, I I ordered online some um, note cards with the Human Rights Commission logo on it um, for any kind of 
communication we might want to do. Um, because I thought with the passing of Representative Cocott that um, that the commission might want to send a condolence card to the family. I'm thankful for Peter's work. Oh, I think that's a great idea. Oh, I think it's great. My, my hope was to have those here in person so that everybody could sign them. Please sign on behalf of the commission. Yes. We'll do. Is there any other new business? Anybody have any? We still have a vacancy, so I would just ask that we all still keep recruiting. Do you know anybody? Some Smith professor. Um, would it be inappropriate at the protest to hand out flyers, you know, like if you want your voice to be heard, or other ways that you can, like saying that we have an opening spot possibly, and asking members of the community if they want to. I have my t-shirt. Can't tell my children haven't borrowed it. They have. It's <laughs> nice. Well, except they're impersonating. <laughs> <laughs> so I will entertain the motion to close the meeting if we are done with the business of the commission. What day did you say gay pride is? It's the first weekend in May. Saturday or Sunday? Saturday. It's usually Saturday, which I think is May 4th. It's May 5th. Saturday, May 5th. Battle of Puebla Day in Mexico. Well, Cinco de Mayo. Right? <laughs> Why isn't that in my calendar? <laughs> <laughs> I just saw it on mine. That's only for my name. Somebody make a motion to adjourn. Second. You did. No, no. I, I said I would entertain the motion. I just made the motion to adjourn. Thank you. Okay. Second. I second. And all in favor.